Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to a very interesting, fairly rare case presentation today. We've got a patient with a double perforation of the eardrum. So usually in the case of perfs, you'll have one distinct hole. In this case, we have two separate ones. And the reason that that's uncommon is that usually over a period of time, if you have two holes in the eardrum, they'll usually coalesce. So they'll join together basically to create one large, usually banana shaped hole in the lower portion of the eardrum. So now the, the history of this case is that this patient had a perforation. He's not exactly sure what the cause was, but he had a perforation about 30 years ago. And at the time it was surgically repaired, but that operation failed, the perforation reopened and he's been living with it ever since. Now he wasn't aware that there were two holes. He just thought it was one. So it was quite a shock for him. So it, you know, the second hole may have developed later on or the operation may have worked to a degree, but part of the graft failed creating two holes, but it's really difficult to say what, what exactly has happened. But um, he's here today to see me primarily because his general practitioner doctor identified an external ear infection. So he was treated with medicine and then the doctor recommended that he get his ear microsuction to clear all this debris away, which is a good, which is the right thing to do because as you can see, we've got all of this white debris. Um, so lots and lots of dead skin filling, that's filled the ear. And of course, that's a lovely breeding ground and food source for bacteria, which makes the infection more likely to reoccur. And the reason that it's all kind of white and creamy looking is not because it's still infected. That's just dead skin that has been rapidly shed. So when you get an ear infection, what will happen is that the, you know, the white blood cells that rush to the area to fight the infection, those white blood cells will release something called growth factor, which are chemical signals which will be picked up by the lower levels of the epidermis. And those cells will rapidly re, you know, reproduce and divide. And that leads to a rapid skin shedding process. So that's what all the white debris is right there. So it's, it's skin that's been freshly shed or it's been freshly desquamated. Um, so that's why he's here. And now we're going to have a look at this double perforation. I have to say they, they look very neat. Um, so going back to the whole um, surgical operation, that is still uh, an option for this patient, I think. Um, so that the operation to repair an eardrum perforation, so you can see there, you don't have to be uh, a master of anatomy to see that there are two very, very large holes in the membrane. And through the holes, you can very clearly see the, the middle ear wall. So there's inflammation of the eardrum. There also appears to be inflammation of the, the middle ear mucosa lining. So we'll creep a bit, little bit closer with the endoscope and there we have it. So it actually looks, you know, quite nice. I think it looks quite pretty. Obviously it's bad for the patient, but uh, I thought this was a lovely, lovely shot. And through the perforations, you can see that kind of rosy red tissue in the background there it looks kind of slimy. That's the middle ear wall. The fact that it looks kind of bumpy and weird, that's fairly normal, but uh, the, the mucosa lining looks inflamed. Um, so, and, and you can see this kind of, again, this lining of desquamated skin and that will now shed and then flake away as normal. But, uh, the, the operation to repair such an injury, such an injury is called a moringoplasty. And typically anything with mering or moringa in the name usually refers to the eardrum. So moringitis will be an inflammation of the eardrum where you might see some blisters forming. Moringotomy would be where a hole is created in the eardrum on purpose to perhaps insert a grommet. Um, and moringoplasty, typically anything with plasty in the name refers to a repair job of some kind. So grafting, molding, something like that. And if the perforation is small, now these holes aren't small, but if it's small, then the surgeon will simply cut around the edge of the perforation. That's called freshening the edges to encourage healing. And then he'll shove fat into the hole, just a plug of fat, usually harvested from the earlobe. So that's called a fat plug moringoplasty. Or if the holes are large, and again, I'm not sure if the operation, if the routine, the surgical routine differs if, if you have a double perf, but um, if the hole is larger, then they'll cut round the edge of the ear canal, and then they'll lift that up as a flap. That's called the tympanomiatal flap. And then behind the eardrum, so behind the perforations, they'll put um, a thin slice of cartilage or fascia, which is muscle lining. 
So all of these materials, they're not going to become an integral part of the eardrum. They're just providing a scaffold for the skin to grow across. So that's called Moringa Plasti. So a very interesting case there, double perf. Um, I have told this patient that I can refer him to a surgeon or he can wear a hearing aid. Either way, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what he proceeds with. He's, he's taking some time to think about it because obviously this was a shock for him that there's two holes instead of one. But there we go. Uh, so I hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you on the next video.